Good day everyone. In this video presentation, we will be discussing ocean energy. But before we go to the main topic, let me share this report published on December 2020 by International Renewable Energy Agency or IRENA about the significance of ocean energy technologies. Next slide please. So the first one is ocean energy can provide affordable, reliable electricity and end-use energy for small islands developing states or SIDS, as well as boosting potable water supplies by seawater desalination. Second, ocean energy creates jobs, improves people's livelihoods, and provides other socioeconomic benefits. The third one is ocean energy technologies offer high predictability, making them suitable to provide steady base load power, which can be further complemented by wind and solar power. The fourth one is ocean energy resources could generate between 45,000 terawatt hours and 130,000 terawatt hours of electricity per year. And lastly, tidal barrage technologies dominate the world's current ascent ocean energy output. Next slide, please. So what is ocean energy? According to Australian Renewable Energy Agency, or ARENA, it refers to all forms of renewable energy derived from the sea. And there are three main types of ocean energy, namely ocean thermal energy conversion, wave energy, and tidal energy. But ARENA added another promising ocean technologies, which is the salinity gradient energy. But for this presentation, we will be focusing only on the three main types. Next slide, please. The first one among the three is the Ocean Thermal Energy Conversion, or OTEC. So what is Ocean Thermal Energy Conversion? It is the process of generating electricity from the temperature difference between warm surface seawater and cold seawater at 800 to 1,000 meters depth. Next slide, please. For OTEC installations, there are some important notes to remember. Number one is suitable installations are in tropical and equatorial waters because of relatively high surface temperatures since surface water temperature vary with latitude and season. For tropical climates, temperature on the surface can reach 20 degrees Celsius while the temperature at a depth of 1 km and below are as low as 4 degrees Celsius. And some known locations for other applications are Hawaii, island nations in South Pacific Oceans, and Gulf nations like Persian Gulf in the Middle East. Next slide, please. The ocean can be considered to be a large heat engine with a source temperature of 10 to 8 degrees Celsius and a sink temperature of 4 degrees Celsius. Then, a heat engine can be operated that utilizes the surface warm water as heat source and deep cold water as the heat sink for the conversion of heat to power. This process or this principle is what we call ocean thermal energy conversion. And by using the sink and source temperature as stated above, we can see that the maximum thermal efficiency using the Carnot relation is at 88%. And it's one of the main disadvantages of ocean thermal energy conversion. In addition to this, the actual thermal efficiencies of water systems that have been performed is much lower with a value of 3%. Next slide, please. So for an autic system to produce a significant amount of power production, the equipment must be very large. For example, consider a closed system autic application which evaporator operates at a log mean temperature difference of 5 degrees Celsius and an over, overall heat transfer condition of 1.5 kilowatts per meter squared degrees Celsius. The required surface area of this evaporator for heat transfer rating of 3,300 kilowatts is determined from this formula. So for a power output of 3,300 kilowatts, a surface area of 440 meters squared is needed. Meanwhile, for one megawatt power output, the heat exchanger will have a surface area of 4,400 meters squared. So we can now conclude that in order to make an autic system to be useful, a very large equipment must be sold, although this will correspond to high capital and pumping costs. Next slide, please. So there are two basic designs for autic systems. The first one is open system autic, which operates on flood cycle, and the other one is closed system, which operates on Anderson cycle. Next slide, please. For an open system autic plant, the figure on the left side is its schematic diagram which is composed of several parts like steam turbine, condenser, and pump. So how it works. The system is similar to flash cycle of the thermal power plants. A chamber, for example, evaporator, is maintained at a sub-atmospheric pressure by a vacuum pump. Warm surface water in state one flows into this chamber where pressure is reduced. Enthalpy of water remains constant during the pressure reducing process. As the pressure of warm water decreases, its temperature also decreases resulting in a liquid vapor mixture in state 2. The pressure vapor in state 3 is directed to a steam turbine, while the liquid is discharged from the chamber in state 4. The vapor in state 5 exits through direct contact condenser, 
which is maintained at a much lower pressure. Cold deep water in stage 6 is to play to the condenser by a pump and mixing of this cold water with the vapor of turbine outlet in stage 5 turns the vapor to the liquid state, liquid state in stage 7, which is then discharged. Next slide, please. Here are some formulas used in open system OTEC plant. For power output from the turbine, for the energy or heat input to the power plant, which can be expressed as the energy difference between the states 1 and 4, and lastly, for thermal efficiency of the plant. Next slide, please. Here is a schematic of a closed cycle OTEC system called Anderson cycle. This is similar to binary cycle of the thermal power plants. Those cycle plants operate on a Rankine cycle with a binary working fluid such as propane that has a low boiling temperature. A working fluid is completely vaporized in the evaporator by the warm surface water. The resulting vapor in state A expands in the turbine and then condenses by transferring its heat to the cold deep water flowing to the condenser in state 7 to 8. The condensed working fluid in state 1 is pumped to the evaporator to complete the closed cycle. The surface water is discharged in state 6 after transferring its heat to the working fluid. Next slide, please. So uh, here are some equations used in closed system water plant. Uh, here's for power output from the turbine, for energy or heat input. Next slide, please. For rate of heat input and for thermal efficiency of the plant. And that's all for ocean thermal energy conversion. And for wave energy, it will be discussed by Mr. Andrade. So for wave energy, how is wave energy formed? First, the uneven solar heating of earth and water bodies and resulting temperature fluctuations and the rotation of earth are the two contributing factors that, that results in the formation of wind. Then the wind will cause the formation of ocean and sea waves. So there are challenges in uh, wave energy conversion since the technologies for this are still in development stage. Some of these problems are first, uh, there are many sites that have large wave activity around the world, but access to these sites is often limited. Second, since there are limited access to these sites, the sites are far more far from populated and industrial districts, and sometimes far from power grids, which results in difficulty to transmit generated electricity. Third, the equipment needed needs to have structural and mechanical strength to withstand strong motions in the sea. Fourth, for a reasonable amount of power production, very large equipment is necessary. Hence, involve, in, involves high capital investments and high maintenance expenses. Fifth, Effects on wave effects of wave power installations on marine life could be a problem. There are known places uh, of higher wave heights. Because of higher wave heights uh, compared to other sites, uh, these locations attract wind surfers. Uh, these are Pacific coast of North America, North Atlantic coast of Scotland. Arabian Sea of Pakistan and India, coast of New England in the United States, Alinui Haha, Channel of Hawaii Islands, and Molokoi Channel of Hawaii Islands. So, power productions from waves. So first, how much energy is available in ocean and sea waves? How much power can be produced from wave energy? In this section, we try to answer questions from the treatment of El Wakil for a wave. 
the relationship between wavelength and period is lambda is equal to 1.56 tau squared, where the wavelength, the lambda, is in meters and period, the tau, is in seconds. In English units, lambda is equal to 5.12 tau squared, where lambda is in feet and tau is in seconds. A traveling wave can be expressed as uh, y, where y is the height above the mean sea level in meters, is equal to a, is amplitude in meters, sine quantity 2 pi over lambda x, minus 2 pi over tau t. And t and tau is time in seconds. These parameters are indicated by a typical traveling wave in figure 914. So n is equals to 2 pi over tau, represents space rate in one per second. m is equals to 2 pi over lambda, and and that will and the equation will be changed to mx minus nt is equals to 2 pi quantity x over lambda minus tau over t over tau represents phase angle which is dimensionless after an initial time of t is equals to zero the wave is repeated after period of time equals tau. So the wave at time zero is that as shown in figure 914. And uh, the wave at time t. So next slide. The wave motion is in horizontal direction, x direction. And the wave velocity is given by velocity is lambda over tau. Water does not flow exactly with a wave. Instead, a water droplet rotates in a place in an elliptical path in a plane of wave propagation with horizontal and vertical semi-axis. The paths of water particles are shown in figure 9.5. The horizontal and vertical semi-axis, the ellipses are given respectively by alpha is equals to a cos sine h m n over sine h m h and beta is equals to a sine h m n over sine h m h where h is depth of water in meter and n is distance uh, from the bottom. The amplitude is half of water height. 2a is equals to h. Note that horizontal semi-axis a alpha is normally greater than vertical semi-axis beta. Also, when n is equals to zero, beta is equals to zero or the bottom of the water. When n is equals to h, Beta is equals to A, which is the surface of water. For large depths, alpha is equals to beta over is equals to A. So a wave has a speed of and height, and therefore a wave has both kinetic and potential energies. And the total energy of wave is the sum of its potential and kinetic energies. The potential energy is due to elevation of water with respect to y is equals to zero in figure 9.4. For differential volume, y l dx, its mean height is y over 2. Then the potential energy is expressed as the equation below, where m is equals to y dx is mass of liquid in kilograms. G is the acceleration due to gravity in meter per second squared. And P or rho is density in kilogram per cubic meter. And L is arbitrary with of two dimensional wave. 
perpendicular to the direction or wave propagation x in meters. Combining equation 9 and uh, 10, combining equation 9, 10 with equation 9, 6, and integrating gives uh, the uh, equation below, which is 9, 11, or potential energy is equals to 1 fourth uh, rho squared a squared times g. And the unit is joules. Potential energy unit per area can be obtained by dividing equation 910 by the area A is equal to lambda L, resulting in the equation below. Kinetic energy of the wave is due to velocity of the water combined contained in one container wavelength from hydrodynamic theory. The kinetic energy is given by the equation below, where omega is complex potential by given by omega is equals to AC over sine H MH times cosine MZ minus NT. Here, Z is a distance measured from a reference point, the integral in equation 913 over the entire water body gives the equation below. Kinetic energy per unit area can be obtained by dividing equation 915 by area is equals to lambda L, resulting in Ke, kinetic energy is equals to one fourth rho A squared times G. Therefore, kinetic and potential energies of traveling wave are identical and the total energy per unit area for example is energy density is given below this this is in fact the energy potential of a wave or available work from a wave finally the wave energy per unit time i.e power per unit area or power density can be obtained by multiplying equation 917 by the frequency f. The frequency is defined as the reciprocal of period f is equal to 1 over tau. Then the equation given below. This is the power potential of a wave or available power from a wave. So uh, next is uh, the example. An ocean wave is 3 meters high and lasts for a period of 5 seconds. The depth of water is 75 meters. Determine A, the wavelength and the wave velocity. B, the horizontal and vertical semi-axis for water motion at the surface. And C, the work and power potentials per unit area. Take the density of seawater to be one kilograms per cubic meter. Solution. A. First, the wavelength and the wave velocity are determined from is equals to 156 tau squared is equals to 1.56. So the period is 5 seconds squared is equals to 39 meters. So the velocity is Lambda over tau, which is 39m over 5 seconds, uh, is equals to 7.8 meters per second. So that is the wavelength and the wave velocity. B, the water height is 2a, is equals to 3m, and thus the amplitude is a, is equals to 1.5 meters. And B, m is equals to 2 pi over lambda, is equals to 2 pi, over 39 m, which is the lambda before, is equals to 0 0.1611 meter squared to negative 1. I m raised to negative 1. Also, at the surface, n is equals to h, is equals to 75 meters. 
the horizontal and vertical semi-axis are determined from alpha is equals to a times cosine h mn over sine h mh. So is equals to 1.5 meters times cosine h yeah, times 0 0.6, 0 0.1611 times 75 over sine h times 0 0.1611 times 75 is equals to 1.5. So for the beta, a sine h m n over sine h m h is equals to 1.5 meters times sine h 0 0.1611 times 75 over sine h uh, times uh, 0 0.1611 times 75 is equals to 1.75 i 1.5 meters the semi axes are equal due to the large depth and indicates the circular motion so c the work potential of the wave per unit area is uh, 1 over 2 rho a squared times g is equals to 1 over 2. So the given rho, which is uh, density of seawater, which is 1,025 kilograms per cubic meter times 1.5 meters raised, raised to 2 squared times uh, the gravity which is 9.81 meters per second squared times 1n over 1 kilogram times meter per second squared times 1 joules over 1n times m is equals to 11 is equals to 11,310 joules per meter squared the wave, the wave power potential per unit area is uh, the 1 over 2 tau rho a squared times g. So, same as the formula before, we will use, uh, we will put a uh, the tau or the period, which is 5 seconds, into the formula resulting in 22,000 I 2,262 Weber per meter squared. So next slide. Next slide is this. Wave power technologies. Various systems and technologies have been proposed uh, for wave energy conversion. For this example, the transfer of energy from wave is water to air and using compressed air to drive the turbine. It is called an oscillating water column technology. Now, how does this work? So first, uh, water moves through wave motion into a hollow container. So the movement of the water will compress the air inside the container. The compressed air drives the turbine connected to a generator where electricity is produced. When the waves moves in opposite direction, which is outward, outward of the container, air fills in the container from the top which is open to the atmosphere. Next, uh, air flows through the turbine from both sides, meaning the system uses a special rotor geometry so that there is no need to change the blade angles or the direction of rotation. So next slide. slide is uh, application of oscillating water column technology into three types of coastal wave power plants. The first is uh, shoreline power, plant, power plants. The plant is installed on the coast uh, 
with a collector structure open to the sea, as explained in the previous slide, where the air is breathing in and out of the chamber. Second, near shore power plant. The plant is installed a few hundred meters from the coastline, which is about deep. The collector is connected to the land by a dam. Third, breakwater power plant. The plant is integrated into a coastal structure such as harbor breakwater or a coastal pro protection project. Next is uh, another commercial technology for wave energy conversion involves using wave water to drive a power machine known as Palamis wave energy converter. The machine consists of five sections connected by joints, which allow flexing in two directions. The machine floats submerged on the surface of the water. It is phased to the direction of moving waters. The power systems are housed inside each tube joints as waves move in the bended tubes. The moving water drives hydraulic power takeoff systems. The power generated is transferred to shore using subsea cables and equipment. Next slide is uh, this. The test unit of Babestar technology. So it is a live system for wave power. It produces power from ocean waves by the Palamis wave, Palamis wave energy converter. So it is a rose or submerged floats which rise and fall. The motion of floats is transferred by a hydraulic system into a generator. The test consists of two floats, but commercial unit will have 20 floats. A maximum wave height is six meter with a water depth of five to eight meters. The dimension is 32 meters times 17 meters times 6.5 meters. And the maximum power potential is 110 kilowatts. This system is designed to shut down the operation when the wave height exceeds a certain limit by uplifting the floats from the water. So the next uh, presenter will present the tidal energy. So for the continuation, here we go for that last ocean energy, which is the tidal energy. Before we move on to the tidal energy, first we must discuss how tides are for what is a tide and how tides are formed. So the tidal motion of ocean and sea water is due to gravitational force of the moon and that of the sun. These forces balance the centrifugal force on the water due to rotation of the earth. The tides are not continuous and they do not have consistent patterns. Their timings, their timing heights vary from day to day and also they vary with the location of the earth. Some coastal regions have more tidal movements with greater tide heights and some have less tidal movements. So tides are formed um, with the, due to the gravitational balance of the sun and the moon, which affects the ocean waters. And in the tide of, in, in the earth is not continuous. It varies from, from day to day. And also in a day, it changes about three to four times. Next is the type of tides according to height. First one is a high tide, when the seawater reaches its greatest high within the tide cycle. 
next one is the low tide. When the seawater reaches its lowest height within the tide cycle. So as you can see in the picture, the picture on the top shows an example of a high tide. And up below one is pictures of a low tide. Next one is types of tides according to lunar phase. So first one is the spring tide. It occurs throughout every month, every season, whenever a new or a full moon. It does not refer to the spring season, but it refers to spring fort. This means that high tides are a little higher and low tides are a little lower than average. Next one is nip tide. It happens when the sun, the moon, and the earth create a right angle and makes the moon half lighted. It occurs twice each month, meaning the high tides are a little lower and low tides are a little higher than average. So as you can see in the picture on the right, um, the first two peaks, these are from the for the springtime and then on the right side is for the nip tide. So next one is tidal energy. Tidal energy is a form of power produced by the natural rise and fall of tides caused by gravitational interaction between Earth and the Sun and the Moon. Power can be harvested using energy in tides. A reservoir can be charged by the high tide and discharged by the low tide. As the water flows in and out of the reservoir, it runs throughout a hydraulic turbine to produce power. So, a reservoir is used to be charged during the high tide and discharged during the low tide. It means that when, when it's high tide, it charges the reservoir and it when it lowers, it discharges the reservoir. And because when high tide, the water flows in the reservoir and, and make the turbine go. So tidal schedule. The tidal schedule is based on the moon motion around the earth, which lasts 24 hours and 50 minutes. The tides rises and falls twice in a lunar day, and thus a full tidal cycle lasts 12 hours and 25 minutes. The tidal range, the difference in water elevation between high tide and low tide, varies during a lunar month, which is 29.5 days so as i said as as i had explained earlier the spring during the spring tide the high tide is higher than usual and the low tide is lower than usual as you can see in this picture in a spring tide it, the low tide is lower than usual and the high tide is higher than usual and in, during the nip tide the high tide is lower than usual and the low tide is higher than usual. So next, um, high tide range heights. Tide, tidal ranges vary with the location of the earth, profile of the shoreline and water depth. High range locations are more suitable for tidal power generation to better justify the installation cost. Some of the known locations with high ranges are Puerto Rio Gallegos in Argentina, Bay of Mezen in Russia, Bay of Fundy in Canada, and River Seven Estuary in UK. These coastlines have tidal typically greater than 10 meters. Recoverable tidal power potential on Earth is estimated to be about 1.5 million megawatts. Several tidal systems are operational with a lower a total power rating over 260 megawatts, according to Gorlov in 2001. So next one, the tidal mechanism. As you can see, this is an example of a tidal single pool tidal mechanism for tidal power generation. Uh, as you can see, the, there are many variables in there which 
will be discussed more later on. So, tidal energy formulas. In order to estimate the power potential of tidal energy, consider a small single pool tidal system as shown in figure 9-10 based on the procedure given by L, where the reference, the potential energy or work potential of a differential element dm is the, the differential of work potential equals to gh dm, where the h is the height or head of the differential element. And dm is equal to negative rho a dh, where rho is the density of the water and a is the surface area of the pool. So we're going to substitute the equation 9-22 to the equation 9-21 and it will result to the differential of the work potential power is equal to negative G rho capital A H D H. So after that, we're going to integrate the equation 9-23 and we'll give the value of the work available is equal to one half G raw AR squared, wherein R is a tidal range. This is tidal range. That is the theoretical amount of work that can be produced by tidal energy with a range R. The power potential or available power is available work over the time period. So the next equation is the work available is equals to W over the change in time or equal to 1 over 2 times change of time times G rho capital A R squared. So next is each, each full tidal cycle lasts 12 hours and 25 minutes and each emptying or filling process takes a period of 6 hours and 12 Point five minutes or 6.2083 hours or 22,350 seconds. Also, the density of the seawater can be taken to be 1,025 kilograms per cubic meter. Therefore, the average power potential is expressed as um, work available is equals to 1 over 2 change in time G rho AR squared is equals to substitute the value that was given one and it will equal b to one over two times twenty two thousand two hundred fifty seconds times nine point one meter per second squared times one thousand twenty five kilogram cubic per cubic meter times a r squared and the value that we will get is the work available is equals to zero point two hundred twenty five a r squared Based on the units that is obtained in an equation 9 26, 26, when the area is in meters squared and the range is in meters, this equation gives power n watts for unit surface area and a tidal range of 10 meters. The power will be so substitute the unit area and the given tidal range of 10 meters, the equation will be. Work available is equal to 0 0.225 AR squared when will be equal to 0 0.225 times 1 meter squared times 10 meters squared and it will be equal to 22.5 watts. Therefore, the power potential of a 10 meter high tide is only 22.5 watts per meter squared. Note that the power generation in tidal systems is not continuous. The system generates during emptying tide of the period. So the next one is formula for the modulated single pool tidal system. So a while ago, the formula that was discussed is about the only the single pool tidal system. So next is one is the modulated single pool tidal system, which is a good strategy for emptying the pool is to do slowly over time. And that strategy is called modulated single pool tidal system. So the equation is the work available is equals to G raw AR 
squared. Open quantity, 0.988A. Open quantity, cosine quantity of pi T sub 1 over 6.2083. Close quantity, minus cosine pi T sub 2 over 6. 0.2083 close quantity minus a squared over 2 times t sub 2 squared minus t sub 1 squared close quantity so where where a is a constant in one per second and it causes the slope of the pool filling and that t sub 1 and t sub 2 are the initial and final time of work production in hours and the value 6.2 083 hours represents the period of a filling or emptying process of the pool. Mm -hmm. So, it can be shown that the work production given modulated single pool system in equation 9-21 is much lower than given by the simple single pool system in equation 9-24. However, Equation 9-24 is applicable for very fast emptying of the pool with high power rating, but the period of power production is very short. So, large turbines on genera generators should be installed to match the high power rating. Power rating. So, the next one is the actual work output that can be obtained defining a tidal system efficiency as N tidal is equals to work actual work over work available. So efficiency of tidal power systems can be taken to be around 30%. Next one is an example. So example 9-3. A modulated single pool tidal system has a tidal range of 10 meters, an area of 1 kilometer squared. The parameter a is 0.08 H raised to negative 1. And work is work produced between T sub 1 is 1 R and T sub 2 is 4 Rs. Using an overall efficiency of 30%, simple single pool system, take the density water to be 1,025 kilograms. So as it is stated, um, we will use the form the first we will use the formula for modulated single pool tidal st system to find the work available. So the solution is the work available is equals to G times rho times a r squared open quantity 0 0.9 0 0.988 a times cosine by T1 squared over 6. 2083 minus cosine pi t sub 2 over 6.2083 close quantity minus a squared over 2 times t sub 2 squared minus t sub 1 squared close quantity. So substitute, substituting all the values, we will have 9.81 per meter squared times 1025 kilogram per cubic meter times 1.8 1 times 10 raised to 6 meters squared times 10, 10 meters squared times 0 0.988 times 0 0.0H 08H raised to 1 times cosine pi times 1R over 6.2083 minus cosine pi 4R times 4Rs over 6.2083 minus 0.08 H raised to negative 1 raised to 2 over 2 times 4 R squared minus 1 R squared. So we will have the answer is 5.06 times 10 raised to 10 joules. The actual power output is actual the, the actual work is equals to N tidal times Work available, which is the the end tidal is the 30%, so it will be 0 0.30 times 5.606 times 10 raised to 10, and it will be equal to 1.682 times 10 raised to 10 joules. So 
this equivalent to 4672 kilowatt hour since 1 kilowatt hour is equals to 3600 3, kilojoules the available average power output during this 3 hour this 3 hour power generation period is the work available is equals to work over t sub 2 minus t sub 1 which will be equal to 5.606 times 10 raised to 10 joules over 4 hours minus 1 hour times 1 hour over 3600 3, seconds with, and will be equal to 5.1 times 10 raised to 6 watts. So the actual power output again is the actual actual work is equal to anti-dull and equals to work available which will be equal to 0 0.30 which is the 30 percent times 5.191 times 10 raised to 6 watts with the computed work available and would be equal to 1.557 times 10 raised to 6 watts so next slide Using the same efficiency value of the work, I know this equivalent to 155. Um, this equivalent to 1557 megawatts since 1 megawatts is equal to 10 raised to 6 watts. The available work output for the case single pool system is the term. So the formula for the single pool system is equal to work available is equal to 1 over 2 G raw AR squared and substitute all the values 1 over 2 times 9.1 meter per second squared times 1025 kilogram per cubic meter times 1 times 10 raised to 6 meter squared times 10 op open quantity 10 meters close quantity squared times 1 newton over 1 kilogram times meter per second squared times one joule over one newton meter. So the answer will be 5.028 times 10 raised to negative 11 joules. Using the same efficiency value that actual work output in this case becomes the actual work is equal to n tidal times work available, which is equal to the Tidal efficiency is equal to 30%, which will become 0 0.30 times 5.028 times 10 raised to 11 joules, and it will be equal to 1.508 times 10 raised to 11 joules. So the work output in the simple system is about nine times of the work by a modulated system. However, the time period for power generation in this mode is much shorter and the turbines must be large to accumulate high power rating. So that's all for the ocean energy. Thank you for listening.